Hi everyone and welcome to another Flight Data Sim tutorial. In today's video I'll be demonstrating something called QNH Blunder Error and how something as simple as setting the wrong QNH can potentially have devastating consequences. Now in 2022 an Airbus A320 was flying the RMP approach onto runway 27 right in Charles de Gaulle in France and they were in IMC conditions. They didn't have the correct QNH set and they resultingly came within six feet of the ground one mile before the end of the runway whilst executing a missed approach. Now the root cause of this was French ATC providing the wrong QNH which was set by the crew and not spotted. Now today I'm going to replicate that exact approach in the same weather conditions and show how setting the wrong QNH impacts vertical guidance on a non-precision approach. So when you have the incorrect QNH set, your indicated altitude will not be the same as your true altitude. Today we have set a higher QNH, 1011, but the actual QNH is 1001. This means your indicated altitude will be higher than your true altitude, meaning you are lower than we think we are. Additionally, when flying a non-precision approach, all your DME and altitude cross-checks will show you on profile, and VNAV will indicate that you're correctly on profile too. In fact, in IMC, your first warning of QNH blunder error might be an unusual radio altimeter height or EGPWS callout. So currently downwind and approaching base leg for the RMP approach runway 27 right. As mentioned, the actual QNH in Charles de Gaulle is 1001. We've set 1011 in error. Let's see what happens when we get onto the approach. So here we are on final, approaching our descent point, two miles before the final approach fix. So we can now set the minimums rounded up to the nearest uh, 100 feet on the MCP. So 800 feet, VNAV path and speed intervent sample match the flat 5 speed. And right now, if you can look at the chart, you can see everything looks normal. We're at 5,000 feet, which is the height of the platform altitude. And, and approaching the final approach fix. Uh, let's get established and do some altitude distance cross checks and see what is what. So approaching the final approach fix, uh, the aircraft's now going to start descending on the vertical profile. We're at the correct height at the final approach fix, so 5,000 feet, and VNAV has now initiated its descent. Um, there are some height checks prior to uh, 10 miles, but we'll do our first height check at 10 miles, where we should be at 3,630 feet. So I've just gone flap 10 just to manage the energy of the aircraft. Let's have a little closer look at the PFD and NT. Approaching 10 miles then, we should be at 3,630 feet. There we are. We are bang on profile, maybe 10 feet high, but in a 737 that's no problem at all. So everything looks normal. VNAV is showing us on profile, passing 10 miles, we're at the correct height, and everything's looking absolutely fine. Nine miles approaching now, we should be at 3,310 feet, here comes nine miles, 3,310 feet. Let's continue the approach and see what happens when we get a little closer to the ground. So now approaching six miles, six miles, 2,360 feet, we're bang on profile, we'll configure a little bit earlier today, so we'll go gear down, flap 15, match the speed, we'll start doing the landing checklist, so start switches are in continuous, recall is checked, speed brake arm green lights, landing gear, down three green, order brake is set to three, let's select the landing flap, which is flap 30 and we'll match the speed. Headwinds less than 10 knots, we'll bug VREF at plus 5. So at 5 miles we should be at 2040, we're exactly on profile. We're still in IMC, however you'll see the radio altimeter is now alive. Now with gross QNH errors the radio altimeter is quite useful at spotting incorrect QNH uh, sets, but we're around 300 feet below profile here. Um, so approaching 4 miles we should be at 1720 feet, that's showing us on profile, but we're also approaching 1000 feet above the ground. That should typically happen at around three miles. It's happened a bit earlier today, but again, you're probably not going to notice that on a typical approach. We're now set the missed approach altitude as we're approaching top of the white bar. That is 5,000 feet, which is now set on the MCP. And again, everything is still looking completely normal, apart from the terrain coming into view on the left-hand side. We're now at 800 feet radio altimeter, three miles. We should be at 1,400 feet. That's showing us exactly on profile. 
and you can see how difficult in these conditions it is to see that you're actually low. You're expecting to see the runway. Let's continue towards minimums if we can get to that height and go around at that height once we realise something is wrong. So the runway approach lights are just coming into sight. We're going to leave the automation in. That's 300 feet on the radio altimeter, but look at our altitude now. 900 feet. We're actually 200 feet above 200. the ground. This is exactly what happened to the crew on that A320. Plus 100 checks. So we're approaching minimums and look how close we are to the ground. That doesn't look right. We're going around now. Minimum. Go around. Flap 15. Set. Go around thrust. Pause here and climb. Gears coming up. We're now just waiting until 400 feet where we can select LNAV as our roll mode and fly the standard missed approach. So there's 400 feet. We'll select LNAV and we can now go to flat 5. Right, above the, fa the 5 book, we can now select flap 1. And approaching the one bug, we can now select flaps up. Now I'm going to fly the standard missed approach. I'll show you a quick replay of how close we were to the ground. And we'll discuss how we can mitigate against that happening on the next approach. So here we are at the missed approach altitude of 5,000 feet. I've just broken off it to reposition for a second approach so we can fly the RMP approach again, runway 27 right into Paris Charles de Gaulle. Now, the incident in 2022, as I mentioned earlier, they got within six feet of the ground. That was the radio altimeter call out before they executed the missed approach. They flew a second approach and they almost did the same again except at the latter stages they realized they had the wrong QNH set. French ATC actually gave them the wrong QNH again. Now I'll show you some useful SOPs we use in my operator to prevent you from setting the wrong QNH. So one way you can prevent QNH blunder error is having a look at the meta at the time of recording. Let's say within the last two hours it was only a couple of hectopascals difference. That means when we get the actual QNH from the ATIS or ATC, if there's a significant difference, like we have today, of 10 hectopascals, you'd then query that with ATC. Now, lastly, we also have a really useful system on the 737 called the Vertical Situation Display, or VSD. What you need to do to activate that is press center twice on the map display and what this will do it will show you the terrain database on a cutout view and we'll put the aircraft back on final with the incorrect q and h and show you how the runway displays on the terrain profile and it's a really useful feature to to see if you have the correct q and h set right anyway i'll get the aircraft repositioned after the final approach fix and we'll fix the q and h at around five or six miles Welcome back on board guys, we're on the second approach now, I've been doing the same altitude distance cross checks, it's showing us still exactly on profile, VNAV is showing us on profile as well, we're going to configure a little bit earlier now, again, so gear down, flap 15, match speed, once again the landing checklist, star switches are in continuous, recall check, speed brake is arm green light, landing gear, down 3 green, order brake is set to uh, 3, we'll now select flap 30, but Jim, our first officer has noticed something. He's seen on the VSD that the vertical profile has gone below the terrain, as has the runway. This is how we can spot QNH blunder in the 
MG and also the Max. So what we could do is change the QNH and watch how the runway moves and how the aircraft reacts. So the correct QNH is 1001. I do have to use the Captain's EFIS because it's the only one that's modelled uh, at the moment with my build. So 1001 and it's quite hard to see but have you noticed how the aircraft has now moved to sit on top of the terrain. The aircraft has leveled off in VNAV because it's on approach logic to re-intercept the correct path. And the runway is now sat correctly on top of the terrain. So that is a great safety feature. We turn on the VSD. So now we're back on the correct height. The altitude distance cross checks will still be exactly the same, but the aircraft is at the correct altitude. We'll continue to configure as we have done complete the landing checklist. We'll now set the missed approach altitude, uh, which is 5,000 feet. So now we've got the correct QNH set. The aircraft's reacted by leveling off and recapturing the correct VNAV profile. Everything's looking much better. The radio altitude is where we expect it to be. The VSD is showing the, the runway on top of the terrain and the altitude distance cross checks still identical are showing you uh, still on profile. Right, so we'll get a little bit closer to the ground and hopefully uh, we'll see the runway where we'd expect it to be. Alright, so correct QNH set, approaching minimums, disconnect the order throttle, disconnect the order pilot, checked, the approach lights coming into view and exactly where expected to be. Continue. Right, quite heavy to go, heavy today, so Three, target attitude onto the flight direct is around 1 to 2 degrees, around 60% needed with flat 30, current weight's around 63 tonnes. Pappy's where we'd like them to be, two mm -hmm. reds, two whites, much better than that first approach. Tad low, but keep descending now. 50, 40, 30, Check, 20, close, 10. hold the attitude. Lovely smooth landing. Speed brakes are up. Reverses. And we'll select second detent. One hundred knots. Eighty Six knots. knots. Manual braking. Sixty knots. We'll go to idle reverse and we'll bring the aircraft to a stop on the runway. So there we are, we've brought the aircraft to a stop on the runway and now I can show you a little bit uh, more closely the effect that changing the QNH has on your VSD uh, terrain display and how the runway moves. So I've got the correct QNH set, 1001. Let's set that incorrect QNH, the Air France crew set, which was 1011. So let's set that now and have a look at how the runway appears on the VSD. It has moved below the terrain. So the VSD we use uh, as an SOP uh, for pilot monitoring to turn on so he could monitor the position of the runway and the approach when we're flying a non-precision approach using VNAV. Well, that's the end of the QNH Blunder Error demonstration. I hope you found that interesting and learned something new. Feel free to apply some of the SOPs I showed you today that we use in real life to prevent QNH Blunder from happening. For example, when you get the actual QNH, check it against the Meta or expected QNH. And also, if you're in the 737, utilize features like the VSD to spot things like the runway above or below the terrain profile. The radio altimeter is also very useful, but only really if you have gross QNH errors. Anyway, if you enjoyed this video, don't forget to smash the thumbs up button. And if you'd like to leave any questions, feel free to leave it in the comment section below. And we'll do another video like this in the future. I'll see you all again very soon. Bye-bye for now.